The African wild dog is Africa's second most threatened predator after the cheetah. Over the last 30 years, the African wild dog population has declined dramatically. Wild dogs have disappeared from 25 of the 39 countries in which they were previously found and only six populations are believed to number more than 100 animals. Today, it is believed that only between 3,000 and 5,500 dogs remain. Most of these are to be found in Eastern and Southern Africa. Like Ipia, used to have one of the best populations of wild dogs in the whole of East Africa. And in fact, it had the sixth largest population of wild dogs in the whole world. They are critically endangered. They are a lighting point for conflict with communities. In the past two years, the dog populations have gone down first really quickly. And where I was previously, we were having packs of 55 roaming across us, but not during the day. They had already decided we're not safe during the, the day. They came to me at night only. The, the die-off last year started in June because none of them have been vaccinated for distemper. We don't know the source of the virus and that's what we're trying to work on, trying to figure out what happened and of course we have our own hypothesis on what could have happened around that time. There's a way to make an entrance. My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Vili today. The wild dog in Swahili is called Mbwamwitu. Wild dogs are a canid and are sometimes called painted wolves because of their colorful and variable coat patterns. They are predominantly black with a mix of small brown, white and yellow coats. The coat is stiff bristle hairs with no underfur. The tail is usually white at the tip, black in the middle and brown at the base. Compared with their domesticated namesakes, Wild dogs have bigger ears. Dedan Gatia is a Kenyan carnivore researcher and biologist based at Mpala Research Center Laikipia and is the project manager for the Kenya Rangelands Wild Dog Project. He aims to study the behavior of and monitor the movement of wild dogs to understand their survival mechanisms in the wilds of Laikipia and Samburu counties. Most people confuse, confuse wild dogs with stray dogs. Stray dogs are domestic dogs that somehow are not owned and so they are just trained by themselves. But wild dogs are natural species which have not been habituated by human beings. The wild dog is about 30 inches high at the shoulder and weighs around 20 to 35 kilograms. They have only four toes per foot, whereas domestic dogs have five on their forefeet. Even with this missing digit, they can reach speeds between 60 to 70 kilometers per hour. The African wild dogs are very successful specialized pack hunters, chasing down their prey to exhaustion. The African wild dog is now officially listed as endangered on the threatened species list by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Currently, Kenya holds approximately 400 to 500 wild dogs with over 75% residing on land outside of national parks and reserves. It is considered that only approximately 6% of wild dogs' historical range in Kenya might still support resident populations. There used to be no wild dogs around uh, between 1980s and 2000, and uh, around 2000, but then dogs recolonized uh, like Ipia, and then the population has been growing over time to an extent that they had the best population in East Africa, but an outbreak last year killed almost all the dogs. Before the outbreak, there was massive movements of people from outside like Ipia coming into like Ipia. 
reason because Laikipia was running so dry and most of the other regions, northern Laikipia, outside Laikipia were running out of water, out of, um, out of food for their cows and then those guys were moving down to Laikipia to try and get food. Second, there was massive deaths of domestic dogs all over in most places in Laikipia. And that was also followed by a massive death of, in, of small carnivores. So species such as jackals, and immediately after that there was massive death of wild dogs. Our hypothesis is that the outbreak could have been from domestic dogs because domestic dogs are core reservoirs to canine, dis to canine diseases such as canine distemper virus and rabies, which means they can easily get it transmitted to other, uh, to other, to other carnivore species, which includes wild dogs. Dr. Matthew Mutinda is a veterinarian with the Kenya Wildlife Service investigating the die-off of both domestic and wild dogs. Basically what happened is there was an outbreak of canine distemper which, is, um, which affected the community dogs and uh, the epicenter of this was in the town of Dodol. Between May and around September of that year, it spread almost to the entire of Laikipia. Wild dogs have lived for many, many million of years in, in this environment. But when it comes to certain uh, viral diseases, they do not have the competent protective immunity to protect themselves. So what happened in this situation was um, the virus jumped from domestic dogs into wild dogs and that's why we lost a significant number of all the known wild dog populations in Laikipia apart from one park. Here is a record of the dogs that we are following. These are at least 10 packs that we had. And we also had more packs that are not recorded in here. All these packs died. When uh, a wild dog is infected with canine distemper, it presents various, disease, various characteristics that allow the veterinarian to know this animal is infected with, uh, with the virus. Canine distemper is often confused with rabies. The alternative name of canine distemper is hard pad disease. For domestic dogs, the disease can easily be controlled by vaccination but people, communities, do not vaccinate their dogs. So it was so easy for the spread of, of, of the disease. Together with collaborators from the county government of Laikipia, the Laikipia Rabies Vaccine Campaign targets to vaccinate 15,000 domestic dogs and cats against rabies. Health standards, world standards have shown that the most efficient way, the most effective method of eradicating rabies is by vaccinating domestic dogs, which means you should vaccinate at least 70% of the total population of dogs in a region to eradicate rabies. Right now we are at Il Motio Community Ranch. It's a community ranch that surrounds, it's surrounded by lots of conservancies, which means there's lots of wildlife, there's lots of people, and there's lots of livestock. And all those three groups of people can be affected by rabies. So that's what we are doing, working to vaccinate dogs, to try to protect people, protect livestock, and protect wildlife at the same time. This is a, an anti-rabies vaccine. It's uh, normally uh, injected into the subcutaneous of the animals. It's an inactivated virus vaccine. So today we have the community or the members of this group ranch bringing their dogs and cat, and we administer a vaccine to each animal that is presented. Uh, this one will protect those animals for a whole year. And we, uh, we issue the, uh, the owner of that animal with an identification, the identification card, which is a legal document uh, indicating that uh, that animal has been vaccinated 
a Guinness rabies and is recognized by the by the laws of, of Kenya. Tumepata habari kwamba kuna fascination ya umbwa na hiyo ili kukinga ile magonjwa ya rabies ama ile magonjwa ya kupata nini umbwa na paka tukapata chance ya ku, kuletewa hii chanjo ya hii umbwa ndio nimekuja hapa e, ile sababu tume nimejua nimesemekana iko ugonjwa inakuja ya umbwa na paka kwa hivyo iko haja ya kutibu hiyo vitu silete madhara ingine. Only three remaining Laikipia wild dogs survived, the phoenix pack. Did they manage to give their species a chance for a future? Laikipia, Kenya. The Samburu Laikipia Wild Dog Project, established in 2001, sought to identify a combination of traditional livestock management, conservation of wild prey, disease management and local outreach which would allow wild dogs to persist in a human dominated landscape. So what the project has been doing over time is coloring wild dog park and getting all that data and then using that data to inform people, to inform stakeholders, to inform scientists, to inform policies, to inform community lands on where the dogs are, what we need to do to protect the dogs. So definitely what we do when you have a pack with collars, we want to follow up to ensure that all the dogs are doing well and that's when we record, that's why we record when we last saw the dog and then when if you've not seen them, at least if you've had them, we record. So these are GPS collar and we apply two collars in packs, a GPS and a VHF collar. The main reason why we prefer these collars is because you put out these collars, they help you find where the dogs are. At the same time, you can program it to get data, to get fixes, to get activated data, which means apart from just finding the dogs, you are able to see where the dogs have been moving. Uh, after the outbreak, uh, these are the only three dogs we have with collars. We have the mom, uh, who is the WDF128, who is the savior of the wild dogs in the Ikipia after they all died. And then these are the two males that came down um, to Laikipia from, we, we think, Isiolo Samburu or something like that. So after the whole outbreak, from all the packs we were following, only a single female survived. And luckily enough, the female had a collar on. And what happened after that is that some two males came from nowhere and they joined up with the female, and the female gave birth Right now, as we are talking, we have five puppies, eight dogs in Laikipia at the moment. But also, luckily enough, the mom is also heavily pregnant and maybe more puppies are on their way coming. Two months later, Dadan is hoping to get a first look at the new litter. So right now we are inside Mpala Conservancy and specifically we just got out of the Mpala Research Centre gate. And where we are going right now is a place called Clifford. Now Clifford is a small hill where the famous park, which we call the Phoenix Park, is currently denning. And what we are going to do right now is just going somewhere close to the den, just to eat and see if the dogs will come out hunting and then of course we'll be able to see them. To Dedan's excitement, the new litter of the Phoenix Park makes an appearance. The future of the wild dogs looks bright. What normally wild dogs do is that when they're getting puppies, they look for very hidden places, and that's where they want to hide their puppies. And after that, maybe four months down the line, they'll get their puppies out of the den when the puppies are ready to move. We now have nine puppies, which is like the new litter, the newest litter we have. Um, almost three months old now. We don't know the sexes of, of the puppies. Of course, we hope that we get more females than males this time around. So right now we are so excited that we get to see the puppies for the first time. They are now coming down.
right now we are talking about a pack of uh, 17 dogs. Mostly they are influenced to moving by two things, food and conflict. So they will try avoiding where lots of people are, cows and goats. We have food at Umpala, it's quiet, so no reason why they should move away. I have a slightly different viewpoint on the wild dog than, than some of traditional farmers because I haven't seen the negative they can do, but they've done a phenomenal job of reducing population in some of the small animals already in the areas they've been resident. But by the same token, over the year that they were not here, uh, the vulture and guinea fowl, the dick deck, the impala, and to an extent the zebra, Grevy zebra have all had almost two generations of offspring that have come through. And that is a, a weird positive from the distemper because the jackal also went, the hyena also reduced. So suddenly an awful lot of these predators disappeared for a year. It won't happen again for a while. So we, you're looking at a change that might not be studied again for another 10 years. The future is bright for wild dogs if we put enough conservation effort into this. Wild dogs are, like all dogs, have high fecundity. That's meaning they have produced to, to many young ones. The existing uh, single population in, uh, uh, near, near Mpala in Laikipia was able to give birth to about seven. And that's just the first the F1 generation. If we go to an F2, F3, F3 generation, this animal will be able to reproduce and reoccupy the landscape. So that's why I'm optimistic. The future is bright, but we have to give them space and we have to put in a conservation effort. The wild dogs here very clearly, they know people are bad. Well, not once have we seen them cross the river into Likiji. Not once, even before they had the pups. They might take a sheep or a goat here in Impala, but they won't take one over there. They know there's problems. So yeah, it's, we need to manage the challenge and we need people to support us. We used to have between 10 and 20 packs in Laikipia. Now we are talking about a single pack within a span of one year, two years. So it's very worrying, but I believe if you can put up efforts with people, uh, our media and conservationists, scientists working all together to spread the word and uh, to put money into conservation, to follow the dogs, find where the dogs are, then we'll have some hope. So I believe we have some hope. It's a worrying moment, but we can have hope if everybody teams up together and we work towards uh, putting back the population moving again. The future is uncertain, but the Phoenix Park has shown that even a small population can bring an endangered species back from the brink of extinction. As stability returns to Lykepia, scientists hope, so too, will the wild dog. <laughs>